So the real question on everyone's mind, is mandatory vaccination possible? To answer this question, let's look at the government's own legislation. In 1946, the U.S. Public Health Service was established and Executive Order 9708 was signed, listing the communicable diseases where quarantines can be used. In 1946 and 2003, cholera, diphtheria, tuberculosis, typhoid, smallpox, yellow fever, and viral hemorrhagic fevers were added to the list. On April 4, 2003, Executive Order 13295 added SARS to the forced vaccination list. Then, on April 1, 2005, Executive Order 13295 added influenza caused by novel or re-emergent influenza viruses that are causing or have the potential to cause a pandemic. The President gave the Secretary of Health and Human Services the power to quarantine at his or her discretion. The Secretary of Health and Human Services now has the power to arrange for the apprehension and examination of persons reasonably thought to be infected. A cough or a fever could put a person at risk for being quarantined for an extended period of time without recourse. On January 28, 2003, Project BioShield was introduced during Bush's State of the Union address. This created permanent and indefinite funding authority to develop medical countermeasures. The National Institutes of Health was given the authority to speed approval of drugs and vaccines. Emergency approval of fast-tracked drugs and vaccines can now be given without the regular course of safety testing. On December 17, 2006, Division E, the Public Readiness and Emergency Preparedness Act, was created. This was added as an addendum to the Defense Appropriations Bill, H.R. 2863, at 11.20 p.m. on a Saturday night, long after House Committee members had signed off on the bill and gone home for the holidays. Under Section B, Paragraph 1, it states, The Secretary of Health and Human Services can make a determination that a disease, health condition, or threat constitutes a public health emergency. He or she may then recommend the manufacture, testing, development, administration, or use of one or more covered countermeasures. A covered countermeasure is defined as a pandemic product, vaccine, or drug. This act also provides complete liability protection for all drugs, vaccines, or biological products deemed a covered countermeasure and used for an outbreak of any kind. Complete liability protection has been given to drug companies for any product used for any public health emergency declared by the Secretary of Health and Human services. The pharmaceutical corporations are now protected from all accountability unless criminal intent to do harm can be proven by the injured party. They are protected from liability even if they know the drug will be harmful to your health. You, however, have no protection or recourse at all from a government who stands to profit from forced mandatory vaccination. You know, if we've asked for U.S. attorneys' opinions, is it illegal to create a, a recreated, weaponized 1918 virus? Is what Tom and Berger's team doing, is it illegal? The owl's response, no, under the guidelines of the U.S. Department of Defense, it's not illegal at all. Uh, they have the rights and the abilities to do that. And it's not illegal to create a vaccine to fight against it. Just look at what happened in anthrax during the Gulf War. We supplied the anthrax to Iraq and Saddam Hussein, and so when we go in there, we have to get vaccines for the, all of our soldiers to protect against the, the, <laughs> the weapon that we created for them, okay? So it's not illegal to do all that. In fact, the military wants those vaccines to have been stockpiled, so that's not illegal. Now, shockingly, this isn't the only time that we can see in the U.S. Code 
where the government feels it has the right to poison, irradiate, and use humans as test subjects. Let's take a look at some of these in the U.S. Code. Let's look at Title 50, Chapter 32. Listed as the Chemical and Biological Warfare Program, we go to Section 1520A, where the government lists restrictions on use of human subjects for testing of chemical or biological agents. Part A reads, Prohibited Activities. The Secretary of Defense may not conduct, directly or by contract, 1. Any test or experiment involving the use of a chemical agent or biological agent on a civilian population, or 2. Any other testing of a chemical agent or biological agent on human subjects. Well, that certainly sounds like a good thing until we read Part B. Under Exceptions, it states, Subject to subsections C, D, and E of this section, the prohibition in subsection A of this section does not apply to a test or experiment carried out for any of the following purposes. 1. Any peaceful purpose that is related to a medical, therapeutic, pharmaceutical, agricultural, industrial, or research activity. Remember, we're talking about humans like you and me here. 2. Any purpose that is directly related to protection against toxic chemicals or biological weapons and agents. And 3. Any law enforcement purpose, including any purpose related to riot control. Under Part C, it states, Informed consent required, and this is very important. The Secretary of Defense may conduct a test or experiment described in subsection B of this section only if informed consent to the testing was obtained from each human subject in advance of the testing on that subject. Now, it is important to note here that your consent is always assumed in all of these experiments. The only way to protest this type of treatment Irradiation and chemical exposure by your government is to verbally and in writing not consent. Again, consent is always assumed. And because you are fooled into voting for representatives, your consent is granted by Congress. Under Part D, Prior Notice to Congress, not later than 30 days after the date of final approval within the Department of Defense of plans for any experiment to study or be conducted by the Department of Defense, whether directly or under contract, involving the use of human subjects for the testing of a chemical agent or biological agent, the Secretary of Defense shall submit to the Committee on Armed Services of the Senate and the Committee on Armed Services of the House of Representatives a report stating forth a full accounting of those plans, and the experiment or study may then be conducted only after the end of the 30-day period, beginning on the date such report is received by those committees. Again, your consent to be tested on is being granted by your congressmen and your senators and generally with the full knowledge and comprehension of the governor of your state. In Part E, the U.S. Code actually defines what a biological agent is. In this section, the term biological agent means any microorganism, including bacteria, viruses like the flu virus, fungi, rickettsiae, or protozoa, pathogen or infectious substance, and any naturally occurring bioengineered or synthesized component of any such microorganism, pathogen or infectious substance, whatever its origin or method of production, like the re-engineered, recombined flu virus that is capable of causing death, disease, or other biological malfunction in a human, an animal, a plant, or another living organism. Deterioration of food, water, equipment, supplies, or materials of any kind, or deleterious alteration of the environment. 
So the government just gave its permission to kill, disease, or make to malfunction the human, animal, plant, or other living organism's body. They've given their permission to deteriorate our food, water, equipment, supplies, and materials of any kind, and they've given their permission to alter our environment. This is your government. And these are the same people who want to vaccinate you and passing laws to force vaccinate you and your children. Under Section 1519, labeled Lethal Binary Chemical Munitions, and under Paragraph A, it states, Notwithstanding any other provision of law, none of the funds authorized to be appropriated by this or any other act shall be used for the purpose of production of lethal binary chemical munitions, unless... The President certifies to Congress that the production of such munitions is essential to the national interest and submits a full report thereon to the President of the Senate, the Vice President, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives as far in advance of the production of such munitions as is practicable. And what is the definition of lethal binary chemical munitions? Simply, they are, one, any toxic chemical, solid, liquid, or gas, which, through its chemical properties, is intended to be used to produce injury or death to human beings, or two, any unique device, instrument, apparatus, or contrivance, including any components or accessories thereof intended to be used to disperse or otherwise disseminate any such toxic chemical. Again, your government is allowing itself to harm you with any toxic chemical, solid, liquid, or gas dispersed from any device, instrument, apparatus, etc. And these are the people that we are hoping are protecting us from vaccination, injury, infection, and death. Moving on to section 1515, listed as suspension of presidential authorization, we read that after November 19th, 1969, the operation of this chapter or any portion thereof may be suspended by the president during the period of any war declared by Congress and during the period of any national emergency declared by Congress or by the president. Note here that a national emergency was certainly declared for the so-called swine flu outbreak of 2009, and that that state of emergency has not, to this date, been relieved. Under Section 1516, titled Delivery Systems, it states that none of the funds authorized to be appropriated by this act shall be used for the procurement of delivery systems specifically designed to disseminate lethal chemical or any biological warfare agents, or for the procurement of delivery system parts or components specifically designed for such purpose. Unless the President shall certify to the Congress that such procurement is essential to the safety and security of the United States. Under Section 1512, Titled Transportation, Open-Air Testing, and Disposal, Presidential Determination Report to Congress, Notice to Congress, and State Governors, it states that none of the funds authorized to be appropriated by this act or any other act may be used for the transportation of any lethal chemical or any biological warfare agent to or from any military installation in the United States, or the open-air testing of any such agent within the United States, or the disposal of any such agent within the United States, until the following procedures have been implemented. 1. The Secretary of Defense has determined that the transportation or testing proposed to be made is necessary in the interests of national security. 2. The Secretary has brought the particulars of the proposed transportation, testing, or disposal to the attention of the Secretary of Health and Human Services, who in turn may direct the Surgeon General of the Public Health Service and other qualified persons to review such particulars with respect to any hazards to public health and safety which such transportation, testing, or disposal may pose, 
and to recommend what precautionary measures are necessary to protect the public health and safety. And three, the Secretary has implemented any precautionary measures recommended in accordance with paragraph two above, including, where practical, detoxification of any such agent, if such agent is to be transported to or from a military installation for disposal, provided, however, that in the event the Secretary finds the recommendations submitted by the Surgeon General would have the effect of preventing the proposed transportation, testing, or disposal, the President may determine that overriding considerations of national security require such transportation, testing, or disposal be conducted. Any transportation, testing, or disposal conducted pursuant to such presidential determination shall be carried out in the safest practicable manner, and the President shall report his determination and an explanation thereof to the President of the Senate, the Vice President, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives as far in advance as practicable. And four, the Secretary has provided notification that the transportation, testing, or disposal will take place except where a presidential determination has been made, a. to the President of the Senate and the Speaker of the House of Representatives at least 10 days before any such transportation will be commenced, and at least 30 days before any such testing or disposal will be commenced, and b. to the Governor of any state through which such agents will be transported, such notification to be provided appropriately in advance of any such transportation. And then there's Title 18, Part 1. Under Chapter 113B, we come to Terrorism. Under Section 2332H, titled Radiological Dispersal Devices, we find out that the government can in fact irradiate us any time it wants to. Under Paragraph A, Section 1, it states that in general, Except as provided in paragraph 2, it shall be unlawful for any person to knowingly produce, construct, otherwise acquire, transfer, directly or indirectly, receive, possess, import, export, or use, or possess, and threaten to use, a. Any weapon that is designed or intended to release radiation or radioactivity at a level dangerous to human life, or b. any device or other object that is capable of or designed or intended to endanger human life through the release of radiation or radioactivity. Once again, that sounds fantastic. But in part two, it states, exception. This subsection does not apply with respect to a. Conduct by or under the authority of the United States or any department or agency thereof, <laughs> or conduct pursuant to the terms of a contract with the United States or any department or agency thereof. One example of this would be the Department of Transportation and the Department of Homeland Security now using full-body radiation scanners in airports, requiring you to pass through these DNA-destroying machines which provably cause cancer with the full protection of the U.S. government under Title 18. Again, the public has no recourse against this type of action taken by your supposedly representative government, especially under a national emergency. Now, to be perfectly clear, the United States federal government has given itself permission to commit terrorist acts upon not only the American people, but against the entirety of the population of this planet, human, animal, and other. It is also giving its permission to any person, entity, or private or public corporation to use what the U.S. Code defines as terrorism through their purposeful release of radiation or of radiological materials under government contract. To be clear, this is legalized terrorism. Do you understand the U.S. government is legally a self-proclaimed terrorist by its own law of admission in Title 18 of the U.S. Code. 
This is your America.